Today on the podcast, we're going to Detroit's West Village, where you'll find the Frederick Stearns House Historical Inn. Formerly the home of a pharmaceutical magnate, the multi-level home was affectionately known as Red Gables. I spent a lot of my childhood near this building as my grandmother lived a few blocks away, and I remember it being offices. Now, today, it was breathtaking to walk in the space and the changes. I'm Jer Stays, and this is your Daily Detroit for Wednesday, May 25th, 2022. The amount of work done here was stunning, so I caught up with the designer and owner Rachel Mitchell, who, along with her husband, have been spending time and treasure on this local landmark to turn it into a bed and breakfast with some pretty neat twists. So let's get started after I remind you that we are funded in large part by our members at patreon.com slash daily Detroit. That's patreon.com slash daily Detroit. My name is Rachel Mitchell. I'm the owner of uh, Frederick Stern House, also uh, Rachel's Home and Garden. Where do you get the idea to pick up to buy this building? And the amount of work done is stunning, but also what a project. So how did you decide to come upon purchasing this? Our background, my husband and I worked overseas, traveled around the world. Alone in Europe, we spent eight years in Germany. During that time, we have seen a lot of beautiful architecture. And when we moved to the tree area, uh, I took some ballroom dance lessons. I fell in love. I said, mm, I want my own ballroom dance studio. So we set out to buy or uh, to look for a property. But uh, being a Michigander, my husband, uh, original from Michigan, and uh, he always have a passion and love for Detroit. And me being an interior designer and a love history and architect, and we think Detroit is one of the best cities in the world. The architecture doesn't remind us Europe. So when we're searching for property, we stumbled across this, uh, upon this building. Even outside it, it's window broken, lumber rotten, landscaping is terrible, and uh, uh, wines grow all over the house, tile broken. But once we stepped inside, we saw the beauty of the uh, millwork and tile work, the beautiful design of the layout. We fell in love instantly, and we know exactly what to do with it and what it should look like in our hand. It's important to let a space talk to you, right? Mm -hmm. To tell you kind of what it needs to be. And when we were on our tours, one of the things I noticed, there is a, a iridescent fireplace, tile fireplace, mm -hmm. and it has an echo of a lake. And it's to me, it takes the line from being a, a piece in a room to being art. You spent a lot of time going through this. How long did you spend working on this renovation? We spent four years. So we bought this uh, property June. Uh, 2018. So we worked on it immediately. We started outside, so I started cleaning up the shrubs and trimming and the landscaping. Then we started working inside slowly and worked with architect. We worked with Queen Evans, architect in Detroit. And uh, of course, myself being uh, in the home renovation and the interior design business, a lot of things just came very handy. <laughs> Is there a room in here that is your favorite, or is this kind of like picking a favorite kid? Oh, my goodness. It would be impossible to pick uh, my favorite because this house was designed perfectly. And uh, from the grand dining room to the both side room to the library and ballroom, all the best. It's only the best here. So let's talk about who it was designed for and who built this house. Do you have information on that? Yes. Uh, the architect uh, is uh, William uh, Stratton, and uh, he's a hu he's the hu uh, husband of uh, Mary Chase, uh, who uh, established uh, the public tower down the road. And this house was built uh, for or uh, by Frederick, Frederick Stearns, who owned a pharmaceutical company down the road. Mm. Yeah. People don't realize that pharmaceuticals was such a huge business in our area for so long. Yeah, it, it was. It, it, they have a beautiful factory down the road on East Jefferson Avenue now. I believe it's an apartment. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think it is apartments. I've, I've actually visited some friends in there. They're beautiful apartments. Mm-hmm. Let's get into the details about this house. How many square feet? Uh, it's about 16,000 square foot, in, including basement. And guest rooms? 10 guest rooms. Okay. Now, touring this and looking at the guest rooms, each one has a unique style. And in fact, all these rooms have uh, unique elements. Something that in our conversations that struck me is that you found a lot of these items or you 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 went out and you got these items. They're one of a kind that you you didn't go out and say, oh, I'm going to go to Home Goods and just get a bunch of stuff. Everything has intention. What, how much joy was there in the hunt for this? <laughs> a, a good deal make your day, right? <laughs> so I definitely had a lots of fun uh, in the past four years finding all these treasures, like from uh, furniture to painting to a lamp to a vase. Lots of thought uh, comes through my mind, but I do have to uh, do a lot of research and uh, see what fit. Uh, fit in the house, looking back, anything got to be, like, this house was built in 1903, anything got to be mostly after 1903. But I, we do have a picture, uh, furniture, uh, at, uh, was uh, made uh, uh, late 1800. But it's okay, because back then people collect old stuff too, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Another thing that you had to deal with is turning back the clock on some of the the renovations. I remember this place being an office and having like mm-hmm. a community meeting here years and years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, what kind of work was involved with that? Well, we had to reimagine this is a personal home, not office anymore. And then we had to turn the clock back, seeing, uh, see, look at that painting. When I found that painting, I was like, wow, I think I imagine that, that oil painting, the man and the woman, that could be the, you know, the man and in the house, the lady in the evening enjoy their time in the library. Then once I saw a painting like that, I know that's what I need. And most of our furniture, paintings, or anything in the house, in, including a magazine stand over there, found that way. Because once you see it, you know that's the piece you need. Now, as far as the business that's here, mm-hmm. let's talk about, we talked about the number of rooms, but there's also uh, gathering spaces and then basically a private pub downstairs, yes, which is very is. cool. Can you talk about the details with that? We do intend to make it a private uh, uh, membership only club from downstairs. Oh, wow. Yeah. So we promote uh, art and music. So we will have a live band playing on a weekly basis. Oh, very cool. Yeah. And is that an area that somebody could rent if they wanted to? Yes. You can rent the whole basement. Okay. Yeah. I'm assuming you can rent the whole building if you'd like. Yes, definitely you can. I mean, what an amazing corporate retreat or something like that to be able to do to bring everybody into the same building and do the meetings. And, and you're in a beautiful neighborhood like the West Village, next to Indian Village. There's so many things happening. You know, it makes me think we've talked a lot about the building. What about the neighborhood drew you to here? Because this is a very special neighborhood with a very special history. Yes. I think this is going to be the pride of Indian Village and the West Village. We got such huge support from all the neighbors in this area. That's great to hear. That's great to hear. So Frederick Stern's house, if people uh, want to know more about it, what can they do? Book a Book a room, things like that. Yes, yeah, so we are still working on the website, and uh, it soon be available. And but uh, before we are opening, and uh, also before the website is ready, I think it's worthwhile for people just Google Frederick Stern, who himself is our inspiration. Uh, what is the date you're looking to be open? Open for for bookings? Uh, June eleventh oh. is our grand opening. Well, I hope you enjoyed our little adventure up East Jefferson. Tomorrow on your Daily Detroit, film director Michael B. Chait is scheduled to stop by for the podcast. He's from the area and has a new movie coming out, Wolfhound. Set in 1944, German-occupied France during World War II, it has a ton of action. With that, I'm Jer Stays. Thank you so much for listening. Remember that you are somebody, and I'll see you around Detroit.